I'm Leona Alislev, and I'm running for leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. Je m'appelle Leona Alislev, et je me présente à la chefferie du Parti conservateur du Canada. Not all points in history are equal. The global balance of power is shifting. Canada's security and prosperity are at risk. We are divided at home, and for the first time in our history, many Canadians believe that tomorrow may not be better than today. Canada is at a crossroads. Failure to deal with the challenges facing our country will affect not only tomorrow, but Canada's future for generations to come. Tomorrow, this Liberal government will table another budget. Canadians should be watching. This is a serious time that requires a serious budget. A budget that delivers economic growth, defence and security, and invests in the big projects that will build strength and resilience for our country's future. Ce sont des temps préoccupants, requérant un budget sérieux. Un budget qui soutient la croissance économique, la défense et la sécurité, et qui investit dans de grands projets qui accroîtront la force et la résilience quant à l'avenir de notre pays. Canada's economy has been challenged by COVID, but let's be clear, it was already faltering under this government before the pandemic began. Economic growth for our country starts with a frank conversation on energy security and the carbon tax. Canada is one of the largest and cleanest producers of oil and gas in the world, but we cannot supply our own energy to all our citizens. Instead, the energy supply that comes through Enbridge Line 5 to Ontario and Quebec can be shut down arbitrarily by the Governor of Michigan, while the East Coast imports oil from countries that don't meet our environmental standards. Our commitment to climate change starts with a commitment to use energy that meets the highest environmental standards in the world. Our own. The irony for anyone truly concerned about greenhouse gas emissions is that the energy imported by tanker emits far greater emissions than energy moved by pipeline. Importing oil also weakens our national economy and supports countries with questionable human rights standards. This budget must invest in a pipeline from west to east that will guarantee energy security for our country and contribute positively to reducing the impact of climate change. The budget must also include a carbon border adjustment that imposes a price on energy being delivered to Canada that doesn't meet our standards. Ce budget se doit d'investir dans un oléoduc allant de ouest en est afin d'attendre la sécurité énergétique et de contribuer positivement à la réduction de l'impact des changements climatiques. Le budget doit également inclure un mécanisme d'ajustement carbone aux frontières imposant un prix sur les combustibles fossiles étant livré au Canada et ne satisfaisant pas nos normes. The Liberal carbon tax was designed to raise the cost of energy as an incentive for consumers to drive less. Inflation has made energy even more expensive than what the carbon tax intended, but Canadians are not driving less and greenhouse gas emissions are not being reduced. Individuals are suffering under this punishing carbon tax with the parliamentary budget officer stating that 60% of households are worse off. These Liberals haven't made the necessary investments in public transit and other infrastructure to give Canadians viable alternatives. I spoke with Sandra, a 31-year-old mom with three small children, who had chosen not to get a driver's license because she wanted to do her part for the environment. Sandra is now taking driving lessons because she's given up waiting for convenient mass transit options to get her groceries and take her children to school and dance lessons. In York Region, after six years of promises, there has not been one shovel in the ground or one track laid on the Young Subway extension and this is typical of this government that is long on promises and short on delivering. 
And it certainly hinders our economy when we're forced to compete with the United States, our largest trading partner, which does not have a carbon tax. The carbon tax is simply not working. The budget needs to remove the carbon tax and replace it with serious greenhouse gas reduction strategies that will actually deliver results. The budget also needs to introduce incentives for corporations to make the critical investments necessary to lower their greenhouse gas emissions. Canada's defence and security has also been compromised under this Liberal government. A government has no greater responsibility than to protect the sovereignty and security of its citizens. But money laundering, cyber hacking, foreign interference and influence are all increasing unchecked. The United States tells us that we're not meeting our commitments to our collective North American defense, NORAD, because we have failed to invest in critical infrastructure modernization. And all Canadians should be embarrassed when our NATO allies point out that we rank among last among the 29 NATO countries in our defense spending. All this while the Ukraine is at war. I come from a military family. My dad was in Denmark during the German occupation in World War II, and my grandfather was in the Danish underground. I grew up on stories of war and occupation, always knowing how fragile democracy is and that the time may come where you must be willing to fight to defend it. My dad's family came to Canada after the war my dad served in Canada's Air Force for over 30 years, achieving the rank of Major General. And I, too, chose service in defense of Canada and became an Air Cadet, attended Royal Military College, served as an Air Force Logistics Officer for 10 years. My husband also served in Canada's Air Force as a jet pilot. His grandfather was a Ukrainian who fled Ukraine in the 1930s as successively oppressive policies under Stalin killed millions of his fellow citizens. Canada's sovereignty must be defended and we must act to support global peace and security. This Liberal government may say they stand with Ukraine, but their actions tell a different story. We've known for years that we needed to do more in support of Ukraine. My Member of Parliament colleagues and I wrote a Defence Committee report in 2017, clearly stating what needed to be done. But five years later, this government has failed to act. The Liberals must do more for Ukraine. They must remove the visa requirement for Ukrainians wanting to come to Canada. They must expedite the export permits that are preventing critical military items from leaving Canada and provide increased support for their transportation to Ukraine. The budget must include increasing defence spending to 2% of GDP in line with our NATO allies now, not in some distant future after the next election or when the Liberals are no longer in power. It must provide for the immediate purchase of critical military equipment and NORAD modernization. Un budget se doit également d'investir dans des grands projets qui positionneront le pays pour les générations à venir. This budget must also invest in the big projects that will position the country for the generations to come. In 1867, Conservatives united this country, then built a railway that connected east to west and gave us the success we have enjoyed over the last 154 years. We need to be ambitious once again and build the foundation of our country's prosperity for the next 100 years. This budget must include secure and sovereign digital infrastructure that connects every part of the country and ensures that no one is left behind in the future economy. It must prioritize modernized airports, deep seaports, railways and public transit that connect goods and people at the speed of tomorrow's demands today. The budget must include investment in an Arctic strategy that will protect our sovereignty from adversaries in our north and imagine and deliver all the possibilities of Canada's next frontier. These are the priorities of Canadians. 
Canadians will be watching tomorrow's budget to see if they are the priorities of the Liberals. In this moment, leaders matter. That's why I'm running for leader of the Conservative Party. I have a vision for Canada. I have the knowledge and real life experience to get it done. My Canada is united from coast to coast to coast, a country where Canadians from every region are valued, where our differences are respected and our unity is our strength. A country where the resources of every region are championed and supported fairly for the contribution they make. A country where goods and labor can move freely throughout. A country that is globally competitive where everyone wants to live and invest. My Canada is sovereign and secure. A country where Canadians decide our future. A country where foreign influence and undue international economic and political pressure have no power. A Canada that is clear-eyed about our place in the world, where we are serious about defending our national interests. A Canada that understands the importance of our allies and honours the commitments we have made to ourselves and to them. A Canada that is a proud trading nation. A Canada that is resilient and can stand on our own for essential health, energy and food products in a time of crisis. And my Canada has the trust and confidence of Canadians. A government that is in service to Canadians. Humble, modern, results-oriented and accountable. A country where individual freedoms are protected. A country where taxes are considered fair. Consumers are better protected. And all citizens have timely access to justice. As leader of Canada's Conservatives, I will do my part to lead our party and our country toward that brighter future. We can do none of it if our party is fractured or if we are unable to connect with Canadians, all Canadians, who simply want a better future for their family, friends and neighbours. And as a federal politician, private sector leader, entrepreneur and military officer, I have the knowledge and experience to get it done. Yes, real world experience matters. As a graduate of the Royal Military College and an Air Force logistician, I've led large teams, managed supply chains, and delivered multi-million dollar government procurement contracts. In the private sector, within Canada and around the world, I managed critical infrastructure, delivered change, modernized technology systems, and implement advanced manufacturing aircraft assembly lines. As an entrepreneur, my husband and I took an idea from concept to reality, created jobs, and delivered an ecotourism service that offered the best our country has to offer to Canadians and visitors from around the world. And as Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party and Member of Parliament for six years, I brought my diverse real-world experience to better inform our debates and provide insight into what government can do to help Canadians succeed or when it should get out of the way. As a Member of Parliament, I was also honoured to serve as Chair of Canada's NATO Parliamentary Assembly, where I wrote reports on NATO defence innovation, submarine warfare and biological threats and bioterrorism in a post-COVID world. And I represented a riding in the GTA, Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill, that is anything but safe for any political party. My entry into politics was not linear. I saw how the Liberal Party works, how its leadership operates, and how they have divided Canada. Why I left the Liberals and joined the Conservatives is the easiest question I will be ever be asked. I left the Liberals on principle. I joined the Conservative Party on principle. As a member of Canada's military, I swore an oath to put service to country above all else. I will never waver from that obligation. Canada is at a tipping point. We must change course. We can change course. Il n'y a qu'un parti conservateur national, fort et uni, qui peut effectuer ce changement pour le Canada. 
tout au long de l'histoire du Canada, ce sont les conservateurs qui ont fait le gros de travail afin de diriger notre pays lors de périodes difficiles. Only a strong, united, national conservative party can deliver that change for Canada. Throughout Canada's history, it is conservatives that have done the heavy lifting to lead our country in difficult times. Leadership matters for our party, for our country. I have the experience, vision, courage, and determination to lead this change. This is how I can serve my country in this moment. Once again, my country is calling. Once again, 